Warning! The following presentation contains information that might contradict what you have previously heard, or believed to be true, about how the human body works, and contains material that is not suitable for closed-minded individuals. Enjoy! So thanks for uh, joining us today. We got uh, a little bit of a change in topics here. We're going to talk a little bit about some mental health issues. Uh, Richie's joining us again. Uh, thanks to her for hopping in and joining the, the conversation. Just so that uh, everybody's aware, we are talking about some mental health issues. We will bring you, bringing up some signs and symptoms of various issues. Please note that we are not your primary healthcare professional. And if you think that you have any of the issues that we are bringing up, please raise them with your own primary care physician or primary care provider. Okay. Yeah. So the when we when we look at like the attention deficit issues and the fact that everybody seems to think that they have it mm -hmm. in terms of the the inattentiveness, it's not really the inattentiveness that is the attention deficit issue. That's just one of the of the symptoms that people with attention mm -hmm. deficit issues happen to have. The other one is, and this is where um, I had growing up, where pe like students and friends and family would think, oh, that person has hyper is, is ADHD because they'd be super hyper kinematic. They would be constantly moving around, constantly have to do stuff, have to do stuff, have to do stuff. And people think, oh, that's the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And once again, that's just one of, uh, of the, of the symptoms that's one of there. The many. One of the many symptoms yeah. that are there. And not everybody who has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is kinematically hyperactive. Yeah. They're, they don't have to constantly be moving around mm -hmm. in terms of the, in terms of that, that symptom. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where you get the, and we were talking about this in terms of the, the, once again, we use the social gender terms here, the, the difference between the boys and the girls in terms of diagnosing, it's almost three to one in terms of childhood between the, the, the boys and the girls, mm -hmm. basically three boys get diagnosed for every one girl that gets diagnosed mm. in terms of the attention deficit issues. But then when we get to adulthood, it's almost equal. Huh. And it's, and so what's the pattern is basically got this reversal in terms of the, the incidence and prevalence rates mm -hmm. that we see about 60% of children who are diagnosed with attention deficit issues will still have attention deficit issues in adulthood. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they grow out of it. It's the fact that they have neuroanatomically and neurophysiologically matured. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, there is a drastic anatomical difference that we, that has been reported for those who continue to have attention deficit issues into adulthood mm -hmm. in terms of what's for just cortical thickness. And so that's how many uh, cells we have within the the cell layers of the of the brain of the cerebral cortex. And what's the problem is because they have differences in in cell layer. The differences in cell layers leads to differences in connections. Mm -hmm. And so the the neuroanatomical hypothesis for why attention deficit issues come about is because you don't get good routing. Mm in between the neurons, you don't get good yeah. connections between the neurons. And because you don't get good connections, you don't get good, good networks. It takes longer for those networks to work correctly in order to get the correct behavioral response that we want to have. Yeah. And because the networks are slow, but the brain wants to work fast, mm -hmm. then you end up having these outbursts. <laughs> and part and part of it is, is with is where within the cerebral cortex, where within the brain those networks happen to be laid out mm -hmm. and it leads into basically the, the three principal ADH, ADD, ADHD diagnosing that we have. We have the primarily inattentive. Mm -hmm. We have the hyperactive mm -hmm. impulsive. And then we have that kind of, you're not really this, you're not really that, but there's something going on that, that kind yeah. of combined attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. And the difference between those is where within the cerebral cortex, mm -hmm. we principally have issues taking place within either the neuro, the norepinephrine or nor, noradrenaline pathways within the cerebral cortex, the dopamine pathways, yeah, or the receptors for the neurotransmitters mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. or the amount of neurotransmitters that are there. Now, there's secondary neurotransmitters that, that come into play that kind of counterbalance the norepinephrine, noradrenaline. And I'll use both terms there because it depends on where you're listening to our conversation. Because mm. in the United States, we'll call it norepinephrine, but everywhere else calls it noradrenaline. Mm. And so if you have issues with, with norepinephrine, noradrenaline, you, t- you typically have hyperactive issues going on within the brain itself because you have increased reticular activating system activity. Whereas if you have dopamine issues, you'll have issues with impulsivity, oh, you have me. issues with, uh, with memory yeah. linkages. Uh, you, have, you may have some issues with, with emotional regulation. So for me personally, I've been diagnosed with a hyperactive um, mm-hmm. impulsivity. My whole life growing up, um, I've been so impulsive. I, it's, I don't think about my actions at all. Like I just do it. And then I realize like after, damn, I see where I went wrong. I shouldn't have done that as well as like within relationships too. Um, it's so hard for my emotions to be controlled. Um, one time, no, this was like recently, um, it was super hot for graduation at LMC and we were on the turf and I was going to do my speech and it was just like so exhausting even sitting there because of the heat. And once after it was done, my parents were looking for me and I was so irritated. Everything was so clouded in my head. Um, and I could not control my emotions even around other people. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a whole bunch of other things that come with ADHD, depression, anxiety. Yep. Yep. And, um, and that and, and that leads into the, some of the other neurotransmitters that that come into play because uh, you'll have serot- you can have serotonin issues, you can have GABA, mm-hmm. gamma aminobutyric acid issues mm-hmm. that, that come in, that can can be impacted. And that's where uh, MDMA uh, treatments for attention deficits and mm-hmm. depression and anxiety issues come into play because it's going to help regulate the GABA yeah. effect. And so when you, when you look at like the, the people with the, um, hyper, with the hyperactive impulsivity type of attention deficit issues, you tend to have on as an associated condition, anxiety mm-hmm. as an associated condition, depression. You don't, always- you don't yeah. still have the, the manic depression yeah, yeah. Issues, uh, the bipolar issues, but you can't have anxiety, you can't have depression. And a lot of the anxiety issue com- comes around with the fact that you're hypersensitive to yeah. your the the stimulus and it could be internalized stimulus, mm-hmm. your your emotional response, mm-hmm. or it could be external stimulus. Right. And that's where and um I'm I'm very bad at this. You know, I'm very bad at this in terms of hey, here's a trigger. Because what's a trigger for one person may not be a trigger for somebody else. Yeah. And so people who have that, the, the, um, impulsivity issues tend to have multiple triggers yeah. and they can't pinpoint what that trigger, what that trigger happens to be. Mm. And it becomes very hard for someone who's, who, who works with them mm-hmm. as to know, okay, what is the trigger going to be? Because that trigger could, could change from day to day, yes. from hour to hour. Yeah. And, and it can become even more problematic on, and once again, uh, in terms of the the gender differences, mm. in terms of hormonal fluxes yeah. that can that that can come about, mm-hmm. and it's not just looking at everybody says oh gender difference. Y'all yeah, talking about menstrual, and it's not about menstrual stuff, even though it's that's how everybody. But any type of in, or um, uh, men who do hyper aggressive stuff, mm. there's a there's a flux in testosterone. Mm-hmm. And that flux in testosterone is going to have the same effect emotionally that the flux in estrogen has for, for, for women. Yeah. And that's where in terms of like treatments for people who have that impulsivity yeah. style of attention deficit issues, we tend to put them into some sort of, okay, go and do something like physically strenuous mm-hmm. and doing that physical strenuous activity. What it does is it kind of lowers that. Yes. That sensitivity allows you to get rid of that the, energy. The, yeah. ener- the energy yeah. that comes about from, from the anxiety. Yes. So like me always like always wanting to do something 
the gym has actually like helped me doing my steps and focusing on that because it expels like all that other extra energy um and along with the like the stimulus being overstimulated being around other people who don't understand it's so difficult I feel like such a burden because I'm like oh my gosh the music's way too loud I can't I can't even like be here right now Mm -hmm. or there's just too many things going on at once um it's just so difficult and as well as like people say ADHD ADD word disorganized but for me personally I can't I can't deal with the disorganization it makes me very anxious and I can't focus I need everything to be exactly the way it is and Mm -hmm. with that I'm also diagnosed with OCD and that's and that's that's the other thing that, that usually comes into play and everybody thinks oh they're like opposites of each other and this is like it's the same neurotransmitter mm. it's the same it's the same neurotransmitter it's the same neuroanatomical process it's the same neurophysiological responses mm-hmm. in terms of OCD and and, and ADD mm-hmm. and um, I used to do this as a as a joke to myself when I was in grad school where I would where there would be days where I would just say oh my ADD is kicking the butt of my OCD. When that, when stuff would get out of uh, out of organization, out of control, and 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 people thought, oh, you're just making. It's like no, it's it's, it's, it's you, you tend to have these coping mechanisms. Yes. And one of the coping me- mechanisms that people who have attention deficit issues tend to do is that they tend to be si- slightly creative. Mm-hmm. And some people like you become like a like a like a, a smart aleck, mm-hmm. or 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 a smart ass, depends on how you want to how you want to phrase it. Because what ends up happening is because you have these quick whips. And you and you can't control the need to 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 blurt it out. Yeah, mm, having no filters. Yeah, yeah, you don't have filters, and 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 it's just like and and people think, oh, you're like this or you're that. It's just like no, it's just like you don't understand. It's like you have to get this out, and it's not like it's in in it's not like a like a Tourette's yeah syndrome issue or or a tick. It's if you don't get it out, you're gonna forget what you want to say exactly or when people talk too slow and i'm like hmm, okay let's go because i need to say what i need to say but i don't want to interrupt and then mm-hmm. i end up forgetting and, oh. and so and, and so what ends up happening is is that people with the attention with people with attention deficit issues is that people will think that they're rude because mm-hmm. they're constantly interrupting it's just like you know you don't understand it's just like they're not doing it on purpose mm-hmm it's, it's because, okay, I have to get this out. Exactly. Yes. Because otherwise I'm not going to remember what I want to say because the next thing you say is going to, is going to make me think about something else. Oh my God. Yeah. I find myself like that in every single conversation. <laughs> and, and so, and so, and it becomes, it becomes very problematic for, for the student, particularly mm-hmm. for, if you have an instructor, college instructor, professor, or if you're in elementary or in high school that mm-hmm. doesn't allow for interruptions. Mm. Like if, 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 if you think back to like when I, when, when we would do lecture, like actual, mm-hmm. like traditional, like me, like lecturing, not us doing like case study stuff. Okay, yeah. I didn't care if you interrupted because mm-hmm. I know that if, if you needed to say something, you just say it. Whereas other, whereas other professors, other instructors would like banish you for mm-hmm. like, how dare you interrupt without understanding? It's just like, Hey, there's, there's stuff happens. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's not like, uh, People talk about in terms of like, oh, like you're accommodating the attention deficit student. No, I'm not accommodating the attention deficit student because any student could do it. Mm. It 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 doesn't it doesn't take me off topic. It may take me to a direction that I didn't want it. That wasn't that I didn't game plan to go. But that's the, that's the nature of having like an organic, authentic learning environment is that right. it allows you to 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 do that. Yeah. And and and. So that, and when we talk about the, the attention deficit issues is when you have that, that need to, once again, it's one, it's, once again, it's, it's one of those, those symptoms where if you're not, if you're someone that can kind of hold your tongue and not have to blurt out, then you probably don't have attention deficit hyperactivity issues. Uh-huh. If you're someone that's uh, in the middle of a conversation, something piques your interest and you automatically have to have to respond you might have it and once again yeah. we're not diagnosing anybody it's something where if, if you if you have these things that are constantly coming up you might want to go talk to somebody about stuff mm. and once again it goes it, it becomes really nice and there's so many really good uh, web-based 
tools out there yeah. to help you out and so many web-based um, assistances right. that are out there yeah. that have come out. It's one of the uh, people are asking, what are the, some of the good things that came out from the, the COVID-19 pandemic stuff that we went through is the fact that we have become accepting of yeah. remote health Yes. Yes. So, the ability to to contact people. Um, I can't. There, I don't want to. I don't want to want to advertise anybody out there. Um, but there's a couple of really good ones that have been being advertised in some of the podcasts that I've that I've been listening to. Yeah. Where like you can be talking to to your therapist or to a psychiatrist or to, yes. to a psychologist that isn't even in the state mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that you're in. Yeah. Um. Along with like the like interrupting people type deal like let's go back to that because my therapist I we would talk all the time and she would tell me I notice when you're like uninterested in the conversation and like you could just tell and you just want to move on to the next thing she'll be talking I'm like like she'll notice that I just want to move on to the next topic Mm -hmm. without and then she's like telling me you haven't even given me time to process and I'm you're already wanting to move on like yeah you know (laughs) I have a bunch of things. Yep. Yep. And, and, and that's, and once again, that's one of the things is, is like the more you're around people who, the more, more you're around the person who has attention deficit issues, mm-hmm. you can pick up on what that person is. Mm-hmm. And this goes, and that kind of point goes into a conversation I've had with, with a very good colleague of mine that uh, works uh, public health with, uh, with, um, and special education with students on the autism spectrum disorder. Mm. And, and what we've basically the statement that she came up with, and I kind of like it because I want to put it to, to everything is, is that if you met one, one person who's autistic, you met one person who's autistic, you have not met the autistic population oh, mm. because everybody's, everybody's individual. Right. And, and it's that whole individuality within, within healthcare. And that's where kind of like the, the whole telehealth, which is mm-hmm. kind of beneficial because it allows, it allows people to have a little bit more access to the healthcare provider allows the healthcare provider to become more entrenched with the individual that they're treating. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, is that because of the way in which healthcare is done, particularly in the United States in terms of it being big business Mm -hmm. and the fact that the ability to have that kind of tight knit close relationship with the patient isn't always there. Yeah. And so you don't get that. And so it, it's, it's just another avenue that allows for the connectionness and the connectedness between the provider and the patient that's there. And it's, 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 a, it's a nice thing to have. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's a good thing to have. The other thing that people are talking about, like what's a, what was one of the benefits that came out with in terms of the, um, the pandemic stuff is the ability as an educator to provide multiple multiple modalities for you to have access to the information so that we're able to kind of pigeonhole. Right. Yeah. Instead, instead, of, in, instead of pigeonholing everybody to how I want to present information, mm. I'm able to, okay, here's the recording, here is the audio, here is the written stuff, here is this, yeah. here is that, here's the information. Yeah you can access the information as where best for you to access the information. Once again, because if, if you're in the classroom with, you haven't had to deal with this, you're, you personally, but I know people who are listening to this have, have dealt with this. You're in a classroom of 250 students, 500 students. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to pay attention to what the professor is, is lecturing on. But someone behind you is tapping the little click thing on the, on the pen mm-hmm. because they're bored. Mm-hmm. They don't have they don't have attention deficit issues. There's there's bored mm-hmm. because we're attention span issues like we were talking about earlier. That clicking is what is going to cause you to lose your ability to focus on what's going on mm-hmm. because now the environment has a new stimulus and that stimulus is going to ooh what's that stimulus oh it's a pen I wonder what kind of pen that is do I have that kind of pen too and and and, and this is where the that whole kind of train of inattentiveness com- comes into play with the, with the attention deficit person. For me, if someone was clicking a pen behind me and I, I'd be like feeling like I'd want to rip my hair out because it's 
overstimulating to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, <laughs> there had been times where I, I, I came off road because someone was doing something and I'm like, you need to stop right now. <laughs> I can't. Um, it's just, it's so hard. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is, it is. It is excessively hard. It's one of the things that, that that I've had to learn because, as you know, and as people who who know me personally know, I don't sit. Oh, like I, like I'm sitting here do, re, doing the recording, mm-hmm. but I spent as the four year and I did five mile walk this morning. And I did my lifting. I mowed the lawn, and I did all. I got rid of all of that that pent up I, stuff I did. because because I, I know okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit. And I'm gonna talk talk with Richie, and I could stand and do this, but the problem is, is that the mic doesn't. I don't have a mic. Uh, the mic is sitting on the desk. I don't have a full mic stand to stand up and move it around. I bought a standing adjustable desk, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> but, 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 but but one of the things that I that I had to teach myself to do, and it became and like I didn't I didn't realize I was doing it, but students would tell us like when you were taking tests, and because I don't sit, I would oh. be kind of I like wander around the room, mm-hmm. and and students would not necessarily find it distracting, but would get anxious because they thought that like oh you're like you're and like they understand it's like no I just need to move. Oh yeah, and so I so the back at the class, I need to stand up. And walk yeah. Yeah, and, and so so what I, so what I would do is is that I would uh, purposefully take on additional tasks on days where I knew I was giving tests. Yeah. So that I would have something to have to attend to. Um. While tests are being while tests are being done. Once again, mm-hmm. it's just it's, it's one of those things where it's just like when you have these these attention deficit issues, you kind of learn how to compensate. Right. Is um, it's not really like a self treatment, even though mm-hmm. it's really it is kind of a self treatment, but. What you do is you is you learn behavioral things, and that co- it goes into to kind of the, the next thing when, it, when we talk about attention deficit issues, and attention deficit hyperactivity issues, is that yeah we can give you meds, and that's kind of like the thing that everybody uh, oh uh, you just go take meds, but the thing is you actually have to learn how to behaviorally modify yourself. Yes. Because the meds will only work for so long. I I'm on meds. Yeah. I mean, and, it's helped, but mm-hmm. it actually exacerbated my stimming Mm -hmm. and like the self harm it's i'm not doing self harm on purpose but i pick up my scalp and there's like scabs all over because i just can sit there for hours stimming Mm -hmm. um and and as as you're trying to you're trying to get that that balance between the between the neurotransmitters and what happens is that the the medicine doesn't allow for that so it's trying to is trying to compensate for having the imbalance yeah but your brain is set up to say, okay, this is my balance. And the message says, no, this is what your balance should be. And now the brain says, okay, now I got to rebalance everything mm-hmm. so that so that I get to where I want to be in terms of my normal mm-hmm. uh, homeostatic optimal level of, of functionality. Yeah. And so it goes into what we we're talking about in terms of like doing activity. Yeah. And one of the things that, that has come out with some from really good research out there, it, particularly with um, school age children. Mm. Is that being active? Yeah, actually lowers symptom outbursts uh-huh. of attention deficit issues mm-hmm. in school age children. Mm-hmm. Doing secondary activities, mm. uh, doodling, uh, uh, right. crocheting, knitting, doing yeah. some doing something tactile while you you're in a conversation. Yes. It lowers. It allows you to attend to the stimulus you have to attend to. Yes. And it kind of lowers that need to attend to other things uh-huh. in terms of that attention deficit issue. Like people uh, would say, oh, like you have you have music on all the time. How can that help with the attention deficit issue? Well, it becomes white noise. Mm. It, be- it becomes it becomes white noise. You don't you don't pay attention to to the song mm-hmm. until it becomes that one song that you that you really like oh. or that or, or that or that. Oh, I haven't heard that song ever. I'm going to listen to that song because I really like that that kind of beat or that kind of flow. And within, now you'll find music. me listening to it 10 and billion times. Exactly. Today. Exactly. And so uh, like th- there's, there's a joke that uh, you used to have with people who, when we would go run and mm-hmm. they were always, well, what are you thinking about when you go run? I'm all right foot, left foot. So I don't fall. And, and they would joke, Oh, I'm thinking about the, the fried eggs and the, and the, the guacamole and the, and the avocado toast and the, and, and and this and that that you're gonna cook when you get done running. And it's just like it's like if I if I'm thinking about all that stuff, I'm gonna forget what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. And and so like like people would ask, like, like, what do you run to? 
like when I go run because like they know like when I lift, it's usually like the the heavy metal mm. stuff. Well, I actually run to, to rap or to, or to country music. Mm-hmm. And they're awful well, why? Is it because it's the beat? It's the, mm-hmm. the rhythm that's there. Yes. And it allows me to, to just kind of just go with that where I'm not actually listening to the to the lyrics or listening to what's going on. It's yeah. Yeah, every once in a while that, that song comes in, you kind of have to stop and listen to the song. Uh-huh. But other than that, it's just like you're kind of just going with the and, and it goes into that, yeah, we can give you the meds to to yes. help control, but the problem is, is that there's there's side effects to all of those meds. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing in terms of the history of the medic of the medication is the attention deficit issues we've known about for quite some time. Uh, the earliest diagnosis that I that I've come across in terms of all the literature was like in the 1700s, mm-hmm. in terms of the history of attention deficit issues. And then because of all the pharmaco- pharmacodynamic and pharmacology uh, kind of chemistry that came out of the late 1800s, early 1900s, mm-hmm. and the um, introduction of amphetamine mm-hmm. is that we actually started to treat attention deficit issues with amphetamine, with amphetamines and realized, oh, people who had attention deficit issues, if we gave them amphetamines, they no longer had attention deficit issues. They were able to focus. Mm. And that's because what's happened is that the, the amphetamines and the stimulant attention deficit drugs are all basically derivatives of the amphetamine. Mm-hmm. are going to function on the norepinephrine and the dopamine receptors. Yeah. And what it does is it, is it, is it evens out that kind of imbalance in the neurotransmitters mm-hmm. and allows for the, for the normal neurophysiological, neuroanatomical processing to take place so that I'm able to control the symptoms. Mm-hmm. And if I'm able to control the symptoms, then I can have normal functionality. But the problem is, is that, and it goes into normal drug, drug interactions, is that as I use those drugs, the cells don't want to be around those drugs. Mm. And so what the cells do is the cells start to modulate the receptors, Mm -hmm. upregulation, downregulation of the receptors so that they get the correct level of stimulant. Mm -hmm. And that's where, okay, so you're on the, you're on drug. And once again, not going to name brand drugs here. You're on stimulant A after six months, stimulant A no longer works. Mm. which means we now have one or two options. We either give with stimulant B or we up the dose of stimulant A. Uh, yeah. But the problem is that we can, we can only buy it due, due to all the pharmaco stuff. We can only up the dose so much. Mm-hmm. And so what's up happening is that you up a dose and it slowly stops working. And now you're going to go to drug B. Yeah. And, plus and you're going to follow that same, same decades. kind of classical. Yeah. Like these drugs, like, stimulants are very addictive mm-hmm. yeah and so what's up happens is that if you don't do the other things the behavioral mod what we usually refer to as behavioral modifications yeah what myself in terms of the non-communicable disease treatments look at in terms of what's referred to as lifestyle intervention uh-huh. if we don't treat the lifestyle yeah then what's up happening is that because the lifestyle is not treated mm-hmm all of the same stimuli, all the same triggers are there. Mm-hmm. And you haven't learned how to modify the behavior so that you're able to get yourself out of the things that would offset and cause attention deficit issues. Yeah. So like my therapist, psychiatrist, like drugs aren't like a be all cure, you know, you still have to learn the coping skills, how to manage stress and, you know, how to prevent yourself from stimming. Because that's such a big issue I have. Even when, even in class and I'm already like reaching for my scalp, I'm like, it's not good. And it starts bleeding and I'm just like, oh my God, I look terrible, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if I ask like a close friend how they see me when I am swimming, I look anxious, worried, <laughs> not there, you know, it's it's not good. Yeah, and, th- and that's where what, one of the things that you, that you start doing is you start learning and once again, it goes into the intervention, lifestyle intervention program. Mm-hmm. You, you, you learn coping skills. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I, it's, I'm feeling like it, it's like I'm getting a little anxious because mm-hmm. usually an- anxiety is going to trigger that kind of stimming because what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to rebalance mm-hmm. your, your emotional awareness. Yeah. And so you start to, okay, instead of picking at your skin, 
you have the little kind of like fidget toy, fidget toy or yeah. rubber band on the yes uh, on the wrist or uh, spinning the pencil or mm-hmm. clicking the the clicker on the pencil or doing something that is not the the stimming, but what it does is it, is it lowers that that level of anxiety that you have. Yeah, and that's when it comes to like me crocheting. Mm-hmm. It helps a ton. It it feels the same, but you know I'm not harming myself. Yep. In the process. And that's where like uh, small little ticks c- yeah. come out. Yeah. And and those small little ticks are are just you trying to get rid of that pent up neurophysiological. Yeah. And once again, you can use think about it as energy. Mm -mm. I need to get rid of this. And so um, people who have attention deficit issues that you see fidget, that's that same kind of um, hyperactive, impulsive style of attention deficit issue, as opposed to the inattentive person. The inattentive person is is constantly trying to find that stimulus that piques their interest. Mm. And once they found that, once once they found that, it's like, okay, I'm going to hone in on it. And what's, what's interesting in terms of that is that um, there's been, it hasn't been kind of mainstreamed in terms of um, psychologists and psychiatrists using this, but there's been some people who basically said, okay, we have these, like uh, those three kind of brands for attention deficit hyperactivity is like, well, there's really this kind of staircase kind of segmented kind of continuum of stuff Mm -hmm. where they've kind of labeled out, like a, there's these seven types. And if you go and do like internet searches on like, what are the types of attention deficit issues? If you go to the CDC or you go to the NIH, the Centers for Disease Control, the National Institutes of Health, or if you're over in Europe, the National Health uh, System in Great Britain or the European Union's equivalency of the NIH, Mm. they'll give you those three because those are the three that are in the DSM. The yeah. The diagnostic, the diagnostic manual for for psychiatrists, but mm-hmm. then a couple, then a few other people said, "Well, there's these other ones." Thanks for listening. Hopefully, you got some uh, insight into attention deficit and hyperactivity disorders and some of the causes that uh, might bring it about, as well as some of the issues related to the uh, social stigmas or social acceptances that take place around neuro and neurological issues. If you like what we're putting out, please make sure that you go ahead and uh, subscribe to the publications that we're doing. Please make sure you like if you also enjoy what we're putting out there. It helps us out with all the algorithms.